some upgrades to it. So I'm going to put you over there and we're going to do a time lapse. Enjoy. Look, I'm Princess Leia. Super cool. Also super cool. Hello and welcome back to the Reality Check 3D printing video review. We're going to be going over the Creality CR10 printer and the upgrades that I've gotten uh, up upgraded over the last couple weeks of having it. So I hope you guys find this video informative. We're going to go right into what I've done basically. If you saw the unboxing video, I talked about several of the different options that were available as well as I showed you many of the things that I had printed uh, ahead of time. And finally, I've gotten to the point to where most of those things that I'm going to be using are on there. There are still a few upgrades that I haven't quite made yet, but let me go into basically just kind of the gist of what's going on here. So uh, let's show you right right away. As you can see in the background, I've got the Anet A8 printing right now. And of course, I like to use the OctoPi with it using a Raspberry Pi on the side of it. It's got the ability to, of course, dim the lights, which I like a lot. And I like the ability that, you know, I can see the camera on it so I can see what I'm printing. Right now, that one is printing some of the reality check uh, little sensors that I make for virtual reality accessories. So right here, I want to show you some of the quality prints that I've been making with the actual CR10. As I showed you at the beginning of the video, this right here is just the Death Star that I printed. Uh, each side took about six hours to print. So this is about a 12 hour print in total. But I think it's actually a really stunning you know, model of, for, for what it is. The threads work really, really nicely. And the inside of it looks like that. So you can see, you know, this model printed very, very nicely on the CR10. As UK Rifter got me hooked, these are the little baby Groots that uh, everybody's been printing on Thingiverse as well. These are awesome, really good looking models. Because these are supposed to have a wood texture naturally, these, it just makes it look really, really nice. And as you can see right there, it kind of gives it a glass-like finish on the bottom of the prints. So that's actually really nice. I love how it does that. It's, it's partly, in, you know, because that PEI board just allows it to stick very nicely. Here we'll show the bottoms of these as well. See these give it that nice glass-like bottom when it's printing. You can see as it goes right there. So that is going to be a sensor mount for virtual reality that I've been printing. Here's like the modern mag mounts. They look like this when it prints those. I would put a magnet in the bottom of them, print it like, just like that. And then the thing pops out like that. Nice. All right, so just like the Anet A8, I wanted to make sure the CR10 also had a Raspberry Pi hooked up to it, some lights and a camera so I could monitor it from a distance. And uh, let's go ahead and get that turned on right now. All right, now that I've got it turned on, I can go right over here to my browser, type in the correct IP address, hit enter, and it should start Octopi for me.
And there we go, Octoprint is starting up here on the CR10. And I can see over here my different profiles that are available to me. I can click on the skeleton pair and I'll go ahead and click print, right? And I can go ahead into control and I can see that I can actually see my printer right there already. Okay, so there's the basic workflow of what I'm doing right now. Uh, there's a lot of plugins, obviously, within Octopi that you can be using that I still haven't quite gotten all set up yet, as, such as automatic postings of these videos to your, your drive folders and whatnot. Uh, also, instant message notifications when your prints are done, you can get those things going. So that way, if you are out and about, as soon as your print is done, you get a little message on your phone. You can also get filament messages, such as when the filament runs low, you can make sure that you don't ever have to worry about it just printing in air. So you can keep keep an eyes on keep eyes on your printer at all time um, through your phone, whether it be using Printoid or the other apps that you can integrate with Octopi. So to finish the video, I'm going to take the camera and we're going to run over there and take a look at everything right now. Okay, so here we have the printer in its current state right now. You can see it sitting right beside its buddy, the Anet A8. Uh, one thing you'll notice right away is that, of course, we do have uh, the big frame structure on it, giving it some more support. And I do think the support comes in handy. I, I, I did I did notice uh, a, a, a increase in stability and better prints because of it. I've, I've also noticed that a lot of people online are starting to sell different kits that you can buy that allow for another Z-Rod over on this other side over here because as, as it is, you know, people that own one of these, you can see there is only one Z-Rod going up and down right here and on the other side there is no Z-Rod at all. So you can buy an attachment for about 50 bucks that'll put a Z-Rod over here and give you another step motor as well. But uh, for my purposes, I think that this is going to work just fine, giving it the added stability with these two top pieces. Uh, so first, I'm just going to start with the top down. Up here, you'll notice we've got the filament holder. It would, of course, get in the way if it was going all the way up and pushing against it. Actually, when it does get up there, it doesn't become a problem because it only goes to about right there. And then by chance it does, the, the cable piece just goes right in here. This piece was created, of course, by printing just another bracket from the, the Lulzbot TAS6. Over here, if you look at the Lulzbot, it's got this arm right here. It can go up and can go down, right? So that arm right there, I basically just took that arm and put it up here on top so that it can just go backwards, right? It can go like that. And then to hold it on the back here, I just simply put a piece. So this is kind of a temporary piece. I do want to upgrade this piece. Uh, I don't recommend doing it just quite like this, but I do like having my filament up top here. The reason I want to say that I, I do that is because when I did have my filament down here on the ground, a couple of times when it would get you know, top heavy or when the, when the cable would get kind of messed up in there, it would fall over and the whole piece would fall over and hit my printer which would mess up the prints. I did not like that at all. So, okay, what you'll notice here on top is we went with the dual fan mod and what we did is we just, we just took the original fan off and we just spliced it over with these dual ones using a soldering iron and that was very simple and easy enough to do. It, uh, it looks pretty cool. Not only that, but it actually just uh, does, of course, cool your prints a lot better and allow them to just not have the problems that you would if you did not have the cooling happening. So you just finer prints, of course, overall and better looking quality. So as you can see, we've got the lights going up and down the side over here. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. Uh, I, I'm thinking about putting lights on the other side or maybe even some lights on bottom. Uh, I still, like I said, have not decided exactly what I'm going to do with that. So what I did down here is I added an extra cable. So when I want to add some extra lights, I can. All I have to do is open that guy up and add the extra strip to it or I can extend it if I need to. So that is there just in case I want to add some more lights either underneath the machine or on the other side. So that's just an option for later. One other thing I want to show you here is of course the camera. Okay, one thing you'll notice right here is we've got the camera in such a way that we can move it all around this whole thing. If I want to you know, get it really, really close to a print, I can actually just move this whole arm in and it'll be nice and close to it. But I like to keep it back to give a nice profile of the whole thing. This arm is pretty cool. It's one thing I wanted on the other printer because I noticed over time having it in the back, although it does work well, I like having one in the front. So this is just kind of my way of experimenting different styles. As you can see overall, this frame structure is just, it's really strong. When, you, when it moves back and forth, you can feel that it is holding itself and it, it legitimately does just make it a lot uh, more secure overall. Plus you could, because of the frame, I could hold more things such as I could hold more, you know, actually filaments on the side of this, you know, simply by adding a piece to this rather than actually having it on the back there. I could have one right here. So it's just a, it's just a matter of, you know, making the thing as stable as you want it to be and then adding the modifications that you want to add. Let's take a look at the powerhouse right down here. When you, when you look at it, you'll notice I added this dimmer right back here. We're going to go down and up and down and up and yep. 
On the side of it, we've got the Raspberry Pi. I actually hot glued that to the side because I didn't want any uh, didn't want any just screws going into it. I wanted it to look just really seamless and nice, and I knew it was going to stay there. So I basically hot glued the case, and the Pi, of course, can pop out as it needs to. So all the power comes out of the back right here, and the cables that I've given it. So they basically just kind of mend into what the machine cables look like. You can't actually tell which ones are not the machine cables. This one right here is the camera cable. This one right here is the lighting cable. And this one right here is the Raspberry Pi cable. Oh, and it's starting to go. So just like we started it earlier, this guy's going to get going here. Okay, and something to quickly talk about is, of course, there are these upgrades that you can put on. That way you can, of course, give it some tension relief right here on the front as well as on the side over there. I did not get a chance to put my pieces on simply because I could not find any screws that would fit in these properly. So I do intend on adding these guys. As of right now, I do not think that they're actually necessary. I, I plan on adding them more as uh, in the case of in the future when you want to optimize your setup. It makes it much easier, of course, when these are already installed and you need to tighten the belt. Um, as of right now, the belts are just fine. They don't need any tightening. They seem to be working, like I said, just perfectly. So uh, for now, I'm going to just be happy with it. But when I do get the screws properly, I'm going to take these guys and install them where they need to be installed. I can have that ability, like I just said. So anyway, for now, these are the installs. They're, these are the upgrades that I'm going to be using. And right now, as you can see, the most difficult thing that I print in my uh, in my Pro VR gear store is these skeleton holders. They are by far the most uh, tedious and the most tasking for a 3D printer to do. But as you can see right now, the CR10 is drawing all my little circles, keeping them all down. Everything is sticking just perfectly, and it is going to go ahead and create itself some skeleton holders right now for a lucky virtual reality enthusiast. And uh, that right there is what makes me happy to see that thing just, just working perfect right there. So that is the goal. And uh, here in about so six hours, we're going to have two sets of controllers. I guess they'll end up looking something like that, basically. So they're going to, they're gonna, you know, take some time. But uh, when they get finished, they're, it's going to be just like that. A really cool, nice skeleton holder that you can use for your Oculus Rift controllers.
guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.